In this episode, we look at the latest release from Penguin Magic, the composition deck, give you a chance to win one for yourself and announce the winner of the King's Wild Tigers limited deck. All that coming up next. School sucks. That's all. <laughs> all right. I'm actually old enough to remember what it's like to be in school and take notes on an actual notebook. And believe me, I'm totally aware that notebooks today mean something very different to the school going generation. I am definitely not talking about a laptop or a tablet. I'm talking about those old fangled stacks of lined paper sandwiched between two cardboard sheets bound together on one end. And yes, using the term old fangled is all the evidence I need of my dinosaur status. <laughs> Anyway, the latest deck from Penguin Magic, the Composition Deck, is a fun deck that takes all of its inspiration from a particular style of notebook, the Composition Notebook, the first examples of which date back to the 1880s. That's way older than me, for the record. Welcome back, I'm The Gentleman Wake, and you're watching the go-to channel for cardists, magicians, collectors, and card players. If you are new here, well then welcome to you too. Whether you are new or returning, we hope this video will compel you to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you'll be alerted every time we post a new video. Be sure to stay all the way through to the end for a chance to win a composition deck directly from me. Let's get into it. The composition deck was first announced via Kickstarter in October of 2018. The deck successfully raised a modest $10,000 in funding and finally shipped to backers in late January, early February of 2019. The deck comes in a white glossy cardstock tug case printed to look like a mini composition notebook, complete with white and black marbled cover and black colored binding. The front reads composition deck and it's the only text that can be found anywhere on the box. The sides are white everywhere but on the binding side. The back of the tuck features the back design of the cards, the same marbled pattern of black and white splotches, with the only difference being that the design on the tuck includes a black strip along the left side meant to simulate the binding. One other interesting thing to note, the deck opens lengthwise like a book rather than the standard top loading tuck cases of most other releases. The tuck and by extension the deck itself are designed to be low cost and affordable. As such there is no seal, no special editions, although the Kickstarter campaign does claim that this is a one time only print run. I will say however that I do wish the deck was available in a premium style tuck case with maybe high quality matte paper cardstock to give it that kind of feel. Uh, even if it was an extra cost, maybe there could be some embossing along the strip to make it mimic the cloth tape found on many composition notebooks, and maybe even thin parallel lines embossed into the white sides to mimic the stacked paper inside the notebook. I think it would have been a really cool addition. Even more so if the box opened in actual book style. Basically what I want is this box designed by Jackson Robinson. If you're wondering what that means, just watch my top 10 tug cases video and you'll see what I mean. Pulling the deck out of the box reveals the marbled black and white card backs. The backs are one way, although you wouldn't be faulted for not noticing. This almost assuredly is on purpose, of course, to add in magic functionality to the deck. Because the pattern is so chaotic, an individual card can get lost among its brethren. This is bad for fans, which end up looking like a giant disc of white and black specks, but great for sleight of hand moves like the top change or the double lift, since the spectator is much less likely to catch a flash or see a second card when the full bleed edges are so well camouflaged. Seeing as how much the patterns on the cards have going on, I can totally imagine a marked version of this deck. I guess if we see it or not depends on how well sales for this one performed. I'm actually surprised, however, there wasn't an included feature for a marked deck right from the beginning, seeing as how this was most definitely a deck designed with magic and magicians in mind. This is a completely custom deck. The faces are fun and unique and carry forward the theme nicely. They feature a hand drawn with a sharpie aesthetic 
that is still highly legible and recognizable. To further sell the notebook vibe, there are faint lines in the background. Each index is handwritten and unique, with no two cards repeating the same characters. In fact, even each orientation of the same card features a different handwritten variation of the index. The same concept extends to the pips. No two pips are the same. All of them have a scratchy feel, as if someone drew the outline and then hastily filled them in. The court cards are really great as well. They are hand sketched versions of bicycle standard counterparts. The figure design is slightly compressed to give space to the large and irregular indices. Despite the customization, the court cards are still utterly recognizable. The deck includes two jokers, hand drawn jester hats with the word joker written underneath. They aren't technically identical, although to a spectator, it'd be hard to tell. The composition notebook has been around in some form or another for about 130 years. I remember having a few when I went through school, although I always tended to gravitate towards spiral notebooks. Who out there remembers the uh, Trapper Keeper? <laughs> Comment below if you do. I'm assuming kids nowadays just use iPads or other tablets to take notes. Anyway, composition notebooks are still readily available in most office supply stores or pharmacies in the standard seven and a half by nine and three quarters size. Penguin actually included a smaller version, this one as an add-on during the campaign. This one measures roughly three and a half by five or exactly that. And it's perfect for writing predictions and other mentalism routines. And it makes a really nice companion piece to the deck. The deck was printed at the Expert Playing Card Company's printing facility in Taiwan, and as such, the handling fares a little bit better, thanks in part to the softer stock than those EPCC decks made in China. It's not a deck designed for cardistry, as flourishes can look a little muddled due to the back design. The deck springs and dribbles well, however, and it farrows front to back with ease. Perhaps the biggest drawback to Penguin's choice in printer is the fact that the EPCC only prints 54 cards to a deck, as opposed to the 56 cards printed by Bicycle or Cardamundi. As such, for a deck that's really designed for magic, there's a genuine lack of gaps. At the very least, a double backer would have been great, or in fact, with the hand-drawn element of the deck, a blank line-ruled card to write down a spectator's name or prediction would have been a very welcome addition indeed. As it is, the composition deck and the companion notebooks are available for pre-order at penguinmagic.com as they wind down fulfillment on the campaign and move towards selling their remaining stock. If you can't wait that long, here's your chance to win a copy of the composition deck from me. To enter, you must like this video, be a subscriber to this channel, and comment below and tell me what your favorite subject in school was and why. For a little extra credit, take a guess as to what my favorite subject was. Congrats to Ronald Ozuski, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, winner of the King's Wild Tigers Limited Deck. Contact me via Instagram to claim your prize. A very special thanks to my awesome Patreon producers whose contributions keep the mics hot and the cameras rolling. Finally, a big thank you to you guys for watching. It's a fantastic time to be a subscriber, so make sure you do that by clicking here. And to watch another great video, click right here. I've been The Gentleman Wake. Hope to see you next time.